Hi, AfterBuzzers. You're watching the AfterBuzz TV After Show for Containment, Season 1, Episode 9, A Kingdom Divided Against Itself. Join us as we break down the episode and give you our thoughts and predictions. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Yeah. Bum, 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 this bum, show deserves this song because it was that intense, right? Yes, it was so intense. I said after it ended that I felt like I was watching Game of Thrones because my anxiety and my heart, mm -hmm. my blood pressure was like through the roof this whole time. Stressful, Not upsetting own. episode. <laughs> I'm your host, Katie Campbell. You can find me on Twitter at Katie E. E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. And joining me tonight is Gabriel Gonzalez. Cross the table over here. Hey, guys. Thank you, Katie. You can find me on Twitter all the time at Double G on TV. And Tiana Hobson. Hello, everyone. You can find me at the Tiana Hobson. And I am trying to get on to um, YouTube right now to see who's in there chatting. Awesome. And you guys may have noticed we are missing Yvette tonight. So make sure you guys tweet her. Um, let her know what you thought about the episode. I'm sure she'd love to talk about it. You can find her on Twitter at Sports and Sass. That's um, Sports N Sass, three S's at the end. I thought Candace was going to let her out with you when you guys got out of containment. Clearly, oh, she's a little bit she's, sicker than Katie was sick. last yeah. week. I snuck out, you guys. I found a way, even though nobody else did. <laughs> and you left her behind. I'm so proud of you. Oh no, I, you know you just gotta you gotta run. I was hoping she would make it, but maybe maybe she'll make it. <laughs> I was hoping she would make it. <laughs> maybe she'll make it next week. It's I don't like know. The most cold blooded I've ever seen, Katie. Listen. I kind of like it. <laughs> Before we jump in tonight's episode, I just want to say um, thank you guys for watching us every week and for your comments. And if you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, please do so. That is youtube.com slash AfterBuzzTV. You can also find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Give us that five-star thumbs up, leave a comment, and tweet us on Twitter using the hashtag ABTVContainment. So let's talk about this episode that was very stressful. Where do you want to start, Katie? Right. I, Where you know, do you want to start? I because wanna, my life is ruined. Everyone's oh, life yeah. is ruined. Everyone's going to die. It's the end of the world. Do you really just think nobody's coming out alive from this? I'm mad. You know why? <laughs> because I feel like Sabine is going to live. I don't like it. Oh, we need to talk. Let's, you know, let's talk about Lommers and okay. Lex. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, yes, I'd like do that. It. I'd let's like to talk it. about them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was really <laughs> into this whole relationship that they had. It was becoming this friendly, bonding experience until the end. Here's my thing with Lommers, and I know Gabriel's been on it from the start of just like, nope, I don't like her, I don't trust her, but every time she gets me to start feeling bad for her and feel like I'm a little bit on her side, she drops some knowledge. I'm like, no, B, <laughs> this is all your fault! Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. That's no, where I go. Wait, were you I on her team the whole time then? Until no, the I've been back and forth okay. with her a lot, but, but tonight I was feeling like, oh yeah. man, like I feel bad for her. She really is trying. She's just, she keeps getting knocked down and she's really just, she had nothing to do with it probably. And then I'm like, but in the back of my head, I'm thinking, nah, girl, like, you know, she had mm -hmm. something to do with it. You know, but, you just got to join me on the dark side already. <laughs> and you know what? She's Gabriel enemy number one. Um, I agree. This episode was really great for Lommers. We learned so much about her. She revealed a lot. She revealed just exactly how she got kind of into, uh, you know, her line of work and why she is as calculating as she has yeah. been so far this season. But um, that ending, you know, I was like, man, am I changing my mind about Lommers? <laughs> and then that last scene and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? You know, nope. I love that Lex called her out on not speaking the total truth. Yes. But, you know, you were just mentioning, Gabriel, that she, we're learning where she comes from. So she's been dealing with these viruses that don't care about humanity. And just, you know, she's coming from a place that in her mind is the best place, but she needs to be honest. Yeah, but you also understand, and that's why I, I was starting to feel compassion towards mm -hmm. her situation, because she's been through it so, so many times and she's fought all these different things and she understands what needs to be done in she's looking at the big picture and we're still looking at the small day-to-day -day scenario. And she's like, well, look, you can't think like that because the big picture is people are gonna die. 
shit's gonna go bad. But at the end of the day, like, we'll find a way to cure yeah. it. And so I'm like, okay, I understand her way of thinking, and I'm glad that I understand how she thinks. I still just can't be fully on board with her. See, my big point on that, she says that um, with her mentor, who she admired so much, is that he showed compassion, and that was his downfall. But I think to myself, why would you want to be in your line of work if you didn't want to help people? Right. And that's what it comes down to. How are you going to... Well, what's that... Where do you draw the line? Why are you doing it if you don't want to help people? You know, you're just willing to cut your losses in every single situation. So yeah. that's the one where I yeah. I understand where Lomers is coming from, but she is so wrong in her thinking, in my opinion. And that's why I'm still rooting for an end to our favorite Dr. Sabine. <laughs> Well, yeah. this just in from our chat, our live chat on YouTube right now. <laughs> really? Kiki Lopez says, do you guys feel like Patient Zero called Sabim, or is this her husband's doing? Because it was mm -hmm. said that he was the head of the CDC. Husband. I, I think so, too. Yeah, and he's a friend of Dr. Cannert's, too, yes. she says. I, I have that in my predictions. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking. Are we there yet? I wasn't no. even thinking along <laughs> those lines, but you know, because I was still just so messed up from all the information, still processing stuff. But yeah, yeah because she like so maybe I do need to give her a break. Yeah, <laughs> no. I, I'm starting to feel like she is more of the compassion, Gabriel. I know you said like just right now you think that she's flawed in that way because this is something you should be you know, compassion for the people, save their lives from the viruses, the CDC. Right. But um, I think we learn more about who she is inside, although, yes, she said, I saw him die from being compassionate, so I can't be like that. But we see her talk a little bit. She starts opening up about how, oh, I met my husband. Of course, she got interrupted um, yeah. from them bringing in supplies or bringing in the, the, the bucket phone. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the little walkie-talkie, maybe, to talk to. shit bucket. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. You literally gave them a hey, bucket. You and no imagine? toilet paper or anything. She's a girl, guys. Like, you can't throw a roll of toilet paper or anything. Would you say well, she was in a shitty too. situation? <laughs> <laughs> guys gotta wipe, too. It's true. I mean, for, right? but not when for they're... everything. A girl's right. gotta write for, for everything. You yeah. know, guys. Think gonna... about just how hot and sweaty that box is. Oh, it's gonna smell like urine and. <gasps> oh. oh God, sorry, I just guess. I'd almost want to be yeah. in the cordon instead. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be in there. <laughs> you think for so? For two days. Well, oh, yeah, no, the, no, box. In the box. You think you'd like, rather yeah, just yeah. go yeah. to the other side and go out to yeah, the cordon? Like, you no. know what? I'll take my chances. You know. <laughs> I think I'll pick I'll... your poison. <laughs> I think I would stay in the box for forty-eight hours. Yeah. I wouldn't go into the cordon. That's scary. You see Fresh what's going on inside ish. of there? Uh, Captain Scott, I want to talk about him. <coughs> He's got to go too. Dish. I hate him <laughs> yeah. so much. He's not very nice. No. And he doesn't listen to others. Yeah. Well, no. and he doesn't work with others well. I feel like he didn't go to preschool. Yeah. Because that's where you learn these kind of things, you know, how to play with others and came from his childhood. Work. Yeah, it came from his childhood. <laughs> There's we need to go back to his childhood and find out what went wrong and where he was and how he became this person. He was one of those guys who got bullied as a kid and now that you put him in a position of power he thinks he's the shit and you know what? He's gonna go too. Is it though? Is it his authority? Like, does he have authority to call the shots and not listen to Lommers with the CDC? It, like, you know, talking well, hierarchy with all of these different things. Well, we take it. We take his word at face value that he actually talked to the governor. We don't actually see a phone call. So for all we know, he could just be messing True. with her and just saying, you know what? I'm not about to take orders from this local sheriff. Yeah. I'm Mr. You know, National Guard. I run the show around here. I don't have that red tape from my boss, who's this mean lady who deserves to get sick. You know, oh. so you know what? She's, he was yeah. just saying, you know what? I'm going to flex my power now that I don't have any chains on me. He insulted. He said, I forget what exactly he said, but he insulted the APD, too. About yeah. how they're not handling this correctly. Like this is they, APD. Wanted, they wanted to send in people, and he said no. And he's like, well, we're not the APD. Be, we can we've been trained for this situation yeah and it's I was like oh right douche there. why yeah. do you have to say things like that how about you listen to the people who have been here mm -hmm. for the duration of this virus for the past 13 days you showed up two days ago mm -hmm. or something like that you know these He's people have a lot more insight long, right? and <laughs> intel about what's going on so captain scott's plan was to try to distract them with food <laughs> Which I guess could usually work. I mean, I'm glad work. there's like, more food in the corner now. Yeah, but 
maybe it's got stomped on or something. Yeah, I mean, usually, I mean, you can distract me with food <laughs> <laughs> easily. You want to get my attention somewhere else? Dangle a oatmeal raisin cookie in front of my oh, face, yeah. and I'll just be like, raisin? Oh. You know what? Uh, some yes. red velvet cookies that could make me leave a mob real quick. But that that crowd, it was too little, too late. Yeah, they were past the point of like bribery of here's some food. Why so, wouldn't they do that earlier? Because. Captain Scott is not a nice person and he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't care about his <laughs> friends either because he might be infecting them by sending them all in like that. Yes. That was stupid. Well, you, you just in, like took out half of your team for 48 hours because you had to send them inside there. And regardless of if it had gone to shit like it did or not, they still would have had to be confined for 48 yeah. hours after coming out of there. So what was the point? Well, keep in mind, you notice he doesn't have the guts to go in there himself and do the job. Mm-hmm. Nope. I mean, and Lex is always the first one. If one of his guys has to do something on the front of the lines, he's right there with them. And exactly. that's the sign of a good leader. Yeah, he's a good guy. He Even Lammers kind of got really down on herself how she's not the tough tough woman and, and you know, the virus is so smart. And, and he was like, no. He gave her a pep talk. He's just such a good guy. But then he I also is. think he's playing her. Oh, really? He because of the information her. he got from Leo before getting stuck in there with her, I think that in his mind he's like calling her out on stuff because now, hey, she can't run away from it. She can't right. talk around it. It's just the two of them. And also, he can get more information out of her without her realizing he's getting the information. Yep. He got her talking. Yeah. Opening up about how she met her husband, talking about how she was in Nantucket for the weekend. All these things that she's just saying to him without realizing that he knows something's up with this virus and he's putting pieces of the puzzle together. Is she playing him back, though? I'd say no, because no. keep in mind that Lex doesn't know that uh, Leo found out Canards was uh, originator of the virus. So he only know he's uh, still only suspecting that it is someone you know higher up in the mm-hmm. CDC, but he doesn't know exactly that. He he believes Lammers is in on it. He doesn't know anything about Cannard, so he's his level of suspicion is right here where we're expecting well, it to he, be right here. He does know right. that Cannard sent the package that he paid for the package to go to okay, yes. um, Henry Byrne. So he does know Cannard is in play somehow, but. He doesn't have the information, so if he can get Lommers talking and any information, he's a detective. A, a piece of information like I was spending my a vacation in Nantucket that it seems so right. random and unuseful, but as soon as he gets out of there and talks to Leo and Leo's like, Nantucket, he's gonna be like, one, two, boom, three, we got it. Well, you know, we I we really don't know if Candace was talking to her or her husband or whatever was going on right there, but do you think, though, she could be playing him back in the sense of saying, I don't trust Cannards? So then she's mm-hmm. giving that little information to Lex, so he's thinking maybe they're not working together. Because she seemed distressed she... and she was coming with the truth, and that's the truth. Maybe uh, it's not. I will say this. I don't think right now, from what we've seen with the characters, that Sabine knows that it was Cannards or her, ah, Cannards and her husband. That's not to say that I don't think she'll um, change allegiances should the situation escalate for herself personally. Okay. Yeah. If she's Just, in danger? Yes, I feel like she will. You know, she'll fall on her sword rather than maybe help out with whatever plan Lex and Jake and our, the rest of our company come up with. Right. Well, let's talk a little bit about what Leo did um, with Nancy. Do you guys think... So Nancy works for the NSA, right? Yes. And well, you got to have those connections somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and I'm wondering if they were a couple at some point. Or maybe they're mm-hmm. just friends. I don't know. There was just something something a little bit. He, he called her beautiful and said, you get more beautiful every time I see you. No, a friend could say that. He could say that to her. But I felt like there was some... I'm not going to lie. I would not say that unless I had ulterior motives. Yeah. I don't, not just with my friends. Sorry. <laughs> I, I could see it being a one-sided you look more thing. beautiful That's every time I see Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think I meant one-sided, like he is attracted to her, but they're friends. Okay. Possibly. I didn't read too much into it because I was just more focused on what she was presenting him with. Right. And I'd never heard his name or her name, so I'm glad that you said it was Nancy. Nancy, Uh, yeah. I was like, NSA woman. I was hoping (laughs) that they would say it twice, and I was like, dang it, I missed it the first time. (laughs) Yeah, Nancy, Nancy. That's why Katie is on that side of the desk, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) No, I watched it twice. 
There's what it is. Nancy. Cheater. <laughs> Nancy, though, she retrieves the phone records um, and finds that Cannards and Burns weren't talking, right? Yes. There was just one burner phone is what Leo suspected it was, and it's not necessarily a burner phone. It was a, a secure... Pri- secure private line. Yeah, private line that's only reserved for... I mean, we know that Lommers has one yes. set up right now for the situation that's happening. She has a direct line to the president. Yeah. Technically, um, people in the White House yeah, have Yeah, people them. in the White Pentagon House would have, would have it. Them. But it's not a very common thing. Not a lot of people have private lines that are untraceable exactly. and can't get tapped into and all that stuff. I watch a lot of Scandal. Yeah, I want to watch that show. <laughs> yeah, she... Okay, so I'm I'm a little worried about that whole situation then. Do you think Cannert is still... He's still guilty, somehow. Right? I still think he Unless is. Unless he's being set up. Ooh. Unless pe- someone used his, um, like, code or whatever to pay for it to get shipped. So it seemed like it came from Cannert's. But it wasn't actually him who sent it. Ooh, he's being used. Like, he could be being used right now. I don't agree with that just because if he was being used, why would he lie to Katie? He had that original lie where it looked like he was just trying to keep the situation under control, but then he was willing to go along with, you know what, I'm the doctor here. I know why patient Zero and Sanders died at the same time, even though there shouldn't have been a, there should have been a discrepancy. So if he is being set up, why would he go along with that story that incriminates him? Because somebody's making him lie? Well, I was just going to say because that's the story that they're telling everyone, mm-hmm. so he has yeah. to stick to the script. Mm. As a, Like, you know, if you're, his boss is Lommers and she's saying this is the story, he's going to stick to it because he doesn't know that out there he's being framed for setting up the whole thing. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. Let's talk about Jana and the BitScan crew. So basically all that's left right now is Jana, Susie, and Sam. And Susie was being so feisty and annoying. Yeah, I do. You know what? It was one I of thought those... you were going to say more. <laughs> no, I just felt like she... <laughs> oh, I have time you know to take a sip of my water. No, I don't. Uh, you know, uh, go sorry. ahead. You know what? Yeah, she was being really annoying, Katie. Go ahead, Tiana. Take she was five. Being, she was being super moody. <laughs> yeah, she left and went to the roof, but I thought she actually did leave uh, yep. to go join... What Venice. I didn't like was ha- when she came back down and um, Jana was like, where have you been? I was on the roof. You guys were too busy playing house. That's what I'm saying. And that comment to me, I was like, that first of all, that's rude because if you guys are going to be stuck here, at least they're trying to clean up the place. You walked in and said it smells like meth in here now. So they're trying to make it better for you. And they're being good people, doing it by themselves, letting you have a moment because your boyfriend who's married and has children left you Mm -hmm. so why are you giving them attitude like that's when i was just you know what girl i was she's being rude yeah yeah i was kind of over Susie doing that because she already knows that dennis is sleazy and she's enabling that and it's like come on girl you don't don't do that to yourself i feel bad about the situation It, it kind of made sense later on when why she was being feisty and rude but at the same time she shouldn't be taking it out on these people especially Jana her best friend who's nothing but nice to her has always been there it explains her reasoning but it doesn't excuse her behavior but you can't do that to the person who's essentially kept you alive for the last 13 days Susie would not still be here if Jana wasn't there and even before that as children I mean remember last week she's got claustrophobia so she couldn't make it in that tunnel when they were kids Jana's Mm -hmm. the one who got her out Right. It's been a long time that Jana's been taking care of this girl. So she's pregnant. Or thinks oh. she's pregnant. And well, I love the drama, so I hope she is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's more fun that way. Yeah. You know, I she's been looking for the good in Dennis this whole time, apparently. And it's like, he's already cheating on his wife, and he's got an entire family. This guy can't be good in the first place. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Exactly. So I feel bad for her with that situation. Um, and then Jana is going to go get a test. She's going to walk outside and go get a test. Hey, and they need to it's know. CW. No. People don't always make good decisions on this network. <laughs> yeah, like they don't really need to know right now while they're in this situation. Because as um, Susie said, like, if I'm going to keep it or not, there's nothing I can do right now anyway contained in here. Like, you know, I don't know but what her decision... I think it'll put her mind at ease and 
make her less moody if you know one way or the other. If you're sitting there unsure about what's going on with your body and your health, I think it makes you more angsty and upset easily and Gianna just doesn't want to deal with moody Susie anymore. Mm -hmm. So she's, let me just handle the situation while you're going to go get a test because you don't even know. It could be the stress and that's why you're late or something like that. Right. Well, the riot though, even though right now in this moment it's over, it could start back up again. I mean, it, it's been over for two minutes, and it's not yeah. something that's going to go away forever. Yeah, but I mean, I was already thinking they left this place already. They blew up the laboratory. They probably don't have any food anyway, so they were going to have to go out True. regardless for supplies because that place has to be down to its bare essentials at this point. Well, hopefully there is food. But I don't know where they would have I feel like it. it wouldn't because if the tweakers did just kind of no. take it over after. I mean, like, oh. at this convenience store that she's oh, going yeah. to. Oh. I feel like that would be picked over. I feel like, well, yeah. Not if probably... Trey's still running business. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, we do actually see him a little bit later on. Or we don't see him. We see well, his gang. Yeah, his gang. Yeah, his crew is still around. Running out. I think they were trying to escape, too, yes? No, they were They were looting. Oh. They were stealing stuff Perfect. from that store. In the Perfect. middle of all the chaos, yeah. sounds and, like a really And there's good a police idea. officer right there as the lookout man. And you're like, awesome man, awesome. Yeah. Now have that faith, con- I really have faith in them. <laughs> that confused me too because we understand uh, the officer's name. I always Mies. Mies, Yes. Okay. So uh, the captain sent him in to mm-hmm. handle some kind of situation in the cordon. But we haven't really seen him act on anything like that, so it's kind of like, well, what were you sent there to do, and have you honestly just abandoned ship just to profit with Trey? Or he's doing something that the chief wants him to do, and we just don't know it yet. There's, I mean, there that has to be answered. Yeah, they couldn't have brought that up without yeah having some sort of resolution for it. My question, I thought they would have been well, you know. Officer Jake has some suspicions the people in the hospital are investigating something. You got to handle it. So that's what I thought it would have been. So I can't... I'm still trying to figure out why is Trey and his gang so important to infiltrate if Mies is focusing on that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's They better answer that question. They no. have to. <laughs> Fans, chip in. Why do you think he's doing it? Well, um, Jana, you know, on her way to go get a test, she sees Xander and Teresa and their whole involvement with this, you know, revolt was was scary. Yeah. You know, they're on their way, Xander and Teresa are talking about baby names and um they're on their way to the grandma and grandpa's house and they see this revolt and I felt so sad for Teresa when she sees, you know, the jacket. She thinks it's her mom walking with the crowd. It's clearly not her mom. She's not turning around. It's just the jacket, <laughs> which probably means she's no longer around. Yeah, someone mm-hmm. got it off of her mom. Or got it from their house or something. Yeah. I don't know if her mom was wearing that. I can't remember. I don't think she was. I feel like I desperate know. times, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah. someone took it off the dead mom. As scary as an uh, image as that might be. Or and maybe it was just at her house. Yeah. Right, where they went into the house and so And on. I was going to say, you know, Teresa's, what, 16, 17 years old. She's scared. She's about to have a baby. She just lost her mom. Her dad hasn't been around so she's running out of family and she's very scared she's literally about to give birth so i think that you know that moment of desperation is just like you know who do you want the most when mm-hmm. you're at your most vulnerable the person i'm like oh my gosh i need my mom yeah and she doesn't have that person so i think any i mean it could have been a black woman walking by with that jacket on she would be like mom yeah, Mom, it's you! And it's like, girl, clearly that ain't your mama. I know. <laughs> and, you know, Xander's so sweet to her. He's all He always is, and he's going to go figure it out and see if it's the mom. But I don't think that's the right decision to split up in that particular moment. She's almost giving birth, and you're leaving her in the streets alone. Yeah. Wrote it down right here. When you separate, that's when bad things happen. Every scary movie ever has yeah. prepared yeah. us for this scenario. And Xander and Teresa were just like the first example mm-hmm. tonight of what splitting up from someone actually does and how bad yes. things happen when you're apart. Yeah, we had, I mean, she was falling on the ground. She's well, she at got, risk like, of trampled. getting trampled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She got what pushed. If and... Somebody steps on her stomach or something, just like running. 
That's terrifying. And um, Xander, we got. We got yeah. Well, Sorry. I was going to say, Xander didn't really end up any better in that scenario either. We find out he mm-hmm. is kind of confronted by the sick man. I don't think he's infected. I mean, I don't know what you guys feel about this, that somebody touches an article of clothing, but you take it off. That couldn't have gone through the jacket, through your shirt, right? Well, we're still we're still under the impression that it can only be transferred through fluids. We don't know how advanced it's spread and what mm-hmm. phase it's at now. So I think it's just a precaution you don't know, honestly. And he doesn't know if it only touched his arm and his jacket or if he touched skin to skin of his hand touched or anything like that. So, I mean, I think it's a precaution and it's a necessary thing yeah. to in, be scared. In my mind, you guys ever been to the gym when it's just like really busy and you just can feel like all that sweat emanating off people. It doesn't matter if you don't touch them. That's what I feel like getting right there in that riot would feel like that. It doesn't matter that, you know, his sweat, some spit, some cough didn't hit you. You feel like there is something on you anyway. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that's probably, yeah, the the jacket was his first instinct because that's what he touched. But I feel like Xander just thinks, you know what, I got to be infected. Look how close I was to him. Yeah. Oh, well, and it's good that he's taking that precaution for Teresa. Um, we also see Grandpa, his box gets stolen, and he gets pushed to the ground. He, like, breaks his ankle. Is that what happened? Oh, I thought it was the knee. It looks like yeah. the knee. Knees, looks like yeah. his knee. Oh, um, poor, poor Bert. Oh, my gosh. And someone's like, give me the box. You don't even know what's inside this box. Know, right? It's got been medical rats. gauze and <laughs> right. neosporin in it. And you're like, give it to me, give it to me. Was it Trey's gang? Or there was just a no, lot I think of it was just a lot going out as well. Yeah. Just a lot of rioters and protesters out there. So he just got stuck in it. And I just want to know, is this the only road in the cordon because when you hear the loud screams you're not thinking hey let me go the long way back home instead of through the mob crowd or like alleyways or something there's got to be some kind of another i guess that's the question you know we're not really sure atlanta is a big city but how big is the cordon itself that there is only one road from Mm-hmm. The hospital, exactly. bit scan, the church. <laughs> it's like all roads <laughs> lead store. to this one area. <laughs> yeah. And then if all roads lead to this one area, why is that the place we chose to do the swap <laughs> for Thomas <laughs> in the first place? Because it seems like everyone, all the foot traffic no, they just went goes to a right different through one, here. Though. Yeah. It wasn't the same door. They went to a different, like the main door. <laughs> but it was... In the, main, the door was like two containers over. Yeah. From, okay. Fine. From the other door. <laughs> All right. Point. <laughs> yeah. This whole thing, like this entire revolt with the cops shooting people in the head, this was mm. so upsetting. I'm glad yeah. they only shot the ones that we're, were gonna die anyway. Is that terrible to say? No. I don't know. We're having a whole gun control yeah, issue yes, in this but country it makes right sense. now. Yeah. That's the problem. Um, like, <laughs> So I feel horrible saying this right now and right. even watching that, you know, just thinking of the past yeah, couple weeks, upsetting. it really is upsetting. Mm-hmm. But innocent lives were saved because of the action that they did. There's a lot of other sick people, though, that didn't get yes. killed, right? Yes, so they're there still are. still roaming around they're inside still, there. But, you know, the one who was, you know, that little girl who was helpless and, you know, sitting there screaming and someone's coming at her and blood dripping down their eyes looking like a zombie that person got shot and it's like okay Mm -hmm. oh do i justify this do i not justify it i don't know and my moral compass is all over the place what did the i'm sorry i was just gonna say you know when i break it down and they put the carnage at a level 10 i mean we Mm -hmm. know they've been teasing this particular scene since episode one Mm -hmm. and on the on the nasty scale it didn't disappoint Mm -hmm. they gave us everything and then some in terms of the carnage so when you see the police taking extreme measures it it wasn't necessarily out of line just because there was so much chaos going on yeah what did they do captain scott referenced what they did they put snipers on containers so what is that do you guys so know the, what sni- that means? the snipers are on top of the containers now to control the situation so if anyone is there and posing a threat they will get shot Right. But the fact that there's now people standing on top at the bird's eye view yeah. with guns pointed down has gotten people to move away and back away and control the situation, which is what Lommer suggested in the first place. Right. And if he had been listening, 
maybe he has a problem listening to women and yeah. minorities no, in does. general okay. because yeah. you know what? Lex is black so I gotta say minorities in general he's not good at listening <laughs> to them yeah well I'm like I, I'm very you know she kind of tried to make him upset saying that oh you should let these people see their families before they die do you think that those people are in danger all the people that he just sent in not really caring not listening to anybody do you think that they're gonna die yes I mean, how much blood, sweat, and all that was going on when you have all those people trying to break out? Remember, just the second someone touches you, you don't start coughing. So we know there's some kind of leeway in terms of the time frame. But all those people around them, you got to think. Uh, yeah. A bunch of them are infected. And even if they're not 100%, the ones who are infected are going to infect those who aren't during the course of the quarantine. That's what I think. Hmm. Yes, that's Let, what I was going to say. Yeah, okay. Let's jump into Katie and Jake. Oh, my goodness. You want me to start crying? <laughs> yeah, that They was... are so cute. They are. They really they... are. And they're going to have this nice little date, a normal date, um, after, even though they, whatever happened with they the shower. A, they had a yeah. shower before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that shower. Shower curtain in between, though. Right. I, know. I know. Have you ever heard of someone having a shower before the first date? Uh, nah, I mean, that's the, all right, sorry. I can't realize where you could interpret that. I, was the like, wrong I way. mean, I think a lot of people shower before first dates <laughs> yeah. in today's society. Before I'm, I'm a lot sorry. Of things. I, yeah, uh, some I was people shower fun with that. <laughs> 10 minutes after they meet each other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, gotta but say, at least they were being safe in the shower, you know? Yes. I, I gotta say, Jake's gotta stick to his strengths and. It's being oiled up after a day at work. It's not singing. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but you know why that was, why that works and why it's cute? It's okay. because every guy in college, every <laughs> guy in college has their guitar that's sitting in their dorm room. It's like, do you play? And like, ah, oh, I'm just working on some. And they know how to play three chords. Yeah. And they sit there and they do it and girls go crazy and they get their panties wet and they're like, oh my gosh, you're so hot. Oh my gosh. I I've mean, been serenaded by a guy before with a guitar. Yes, and they don't have to be good at playing the <laughs> yeah, guitar. It's just so beautiful. And you play three chords. I'm telling you, you know three chords, and you can play a song on a guitar, and a girl will go crazy bananas for you for well, that. Well, it looked yeah, that like was the a... other way around <laughs> here, because Katie's playing her guitar and her song, and Jake was just looking at her. So cute with this just love in his face. He's looking at her so in love. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of, I would look at, you know, Katie too if she just showed off like that. And um, we were talking about it. Julie Plack twi uh, tweeted out that mm -hmm. Kristen Gatoski not only sang that song, but she actually wrote the song from that scene. I thought that was really cool. That is really cool. That's really cool. And this, she said it was a song that she sings to Quentin, you know, from time to time. That's the only person she performs it for. That's really so, sweet. So now Jake wants to learn because he wants to sing it to Quentin down the line, apparently. <laughs> Maybe oh. they'll make it a duet in oh. the future. Well, this date, I hope that there will be a future <laughs> because this date started off really well. Katie, everyone's dying. I am so <laughs> sad wanted, about this. You wanted to cry on live internet? <laughs> yes, I do. I might start crying, you guys. Quentin runs in and he's like, Ray took Brittany and Mary and Ray we remember is Britney's stepfather right. and um, the least listen, responsible adult in the history of adults. I <laughs> knew this was going to happen or at least I was going to be mad at the show if they didn't do something with this because in the very beginning we had the hospital um, you know Katie was talking to the kids and um, Ray saying, we got to get out of here. We got, let's They're go home. They're all what? riding and leaving. Yeah, he's like, what's yeah. the problem? Why do we need to be here? We're healthy. Why can't we just go to our own homes? And then they were like, no, we're not doing that. We're staying here. It's the best option. All right, guys, Ray, can you watch over the kids? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? Like, for sure, he's going to try to get out of here, especially with Brittany. And um, he takes Brittany and Mary and they go searching for him. So now Katie and Jake, where's Quentin, by the way? Is he just He's up? at the hospital. Okay. He's playing with his friends. All right. With nurse, whatever her name is. Nurse, That yeah. they're always Talks with. about quickies. That's right. We never I'm really sorry, see her. They bad. talk about her a lot. Yeah, we've never <laughs> seen her. Well, Katie and Jake now are in the chaos. And Tiana, you mentioned before that people splitting up. 
This is a sad Watch time. a scary movie, guys. <laughs> no. Stick together in the group. He could have taken his gear off right there. They'd already showered together at that point, so yes. But, like, he didn't even have to get naked for that, right? No. He just had clothes underneath. These were just gear, you know. The so vest, the belt. Just take it off right there. I think there. he wanted to not have it so close. He didn't want the people to see him taking it off, which mm-hmm. I understand and I get because, he, like he said, he is a sitting duck in a situation like this, walking around with police gear. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey... That's yeah. a dumb thing to do. Um, but there were other situa- other possibilities that he could have done. He could have gone in the alley where Katie was hiding. He could have gone further down in there and ditched or, the clothes. Or brought her. Or brought her along. But he was probably corner. like, it'll be faster if I just go solo real quick. So I can't. Uh, I, was, I was more concerned, you know, you see that kind of chaos. And I noticed he didn't take his gun with him. I'm like, you're one of the few guys who's going to be able to use some firepower to get yourself out of a situation. How do you leave that behind? He did leave his gun. Yeah, because I was like, I was like, he's going to have to pull it out to save Katie or somebody, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't. And that shocked me because it's like, maybe it just happened too fast. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making excuses. Right now. Uh, maybe he was, you know, thinking about a nice long shower and he forgot <laughs> little things like the yeah. his weapons. Well, Jake sees uh, Ray with Brittany and they tell him that Mary, we, we had to leave her because she's sick. And a poor little girl. I'm sorry, Ray. I do not care. You are the one who chose to run off with these two little girls so they are now your responsibility and you just leave her because she got sick i understand you don't want to get sick it's a crazy situation she's gonna die like anyways who cares but you still don't just abandon the little girl Mm -hmm. take her back to the hospital because you know what this riot's still gonna be happening 10 Mm -hmm. minutes from now so you could get her back over there and then get back to the wall to get in or or send her somewhere like I don't know what you're supposed to do but don't do that yeah just leave this little innocent girl who's scared in a crazy mob Mm -hmm. of all places at least leave her thank you (laughs) at least leave her two streets over and tell her to get away from the mob or something also my question you really think Ray if they see a door open he's suddenly gonna drag the kids in there no he's gonna leave them and look out for himself like the sleazy person he yeah. is. They they didn't really give information to, uh, Jake said, like, sick, sick, meaning, like, is she infected with the virus? And, and they just kind of looked at him and then walked away. So we don't even know if, you know, was she touched by somebody who was infected or did she just cough? And is it, I mean, sometimes I cough by, like, swallowing wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, remember, choking. she kissed Thomas in the last episode. Mm-hmm. <gasps> and we know he's asymptomatic, so even though he's not shown symptoms, oh, she's still... She's still... Yep. Now I'm even more. You see what happens when you kiss people. <laughs> <laughs> see Two boys and girls. <laughs> see girls. Boys really do have cooties. They yes! do. Boys have cooties. No, we don't. <laughs> Thomas That's real, is think, the one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, well, keep in mind, Doctor Sanders is okay. Besides patient zero, Doctor Sanders is the one that really got the chain rolling. So girls have more cooties. Nope. It all yes. started with the man. Yeah. All I'm saying. Yeah. Burns. I don't, you know what? It's true. It was Henry Burns. He it started it off. Boys have cooties. Uh, uh. Well, poor. circle, circle, dot, dot. Now I got my cootie shot. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. You I, I haven't heard that in like a long time. <laughs> that was really fun. It's like being back in the fifth grade. <laughs> awesome. I feel like I should move away from Gabriel. Oh, right I gotta be like that. <laughs> Four to six feet. Four to six feet. Katie, have I told you that I'd save you over Tiana if you're in the cordon? <laughs> you have. Well, okay. Now just, we know you're just, the only one who'll save you. in the cordon. Yeah, but the well, one time know, he said you... he wouldn't save me, I really don't know if I could trust you. Well, He's you like know, Ray. Hey, yeah. I just don't know if you can trust yeah. him or not. <laughs> After that comment, I'd save you and Yvette first. Just, <laughs> just saying. Well, guys, I escaped the cordon, remember? I, mean, I don't know. Ex- I, I, you escaped I, I, quarantine. I feel yeah. like you just left it. You used Yvette as a scapegoat. I think you just don't want to tell us. You're putting okay. on this big image to show that you're still the nice one. All that aside, I want to talk about Katie trying to save Mary. And um, she just let everything go. And I, I feel bad because I feel like I understand she's the opposite of Ray in this situation. Yeah. She wants to save her at all costs. This poor little girl gets killed in a car accident. 
Yeah, of all things. Of all things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, to be honest, when we saw the guy blow up the bus, I thought it's like, oh, he's going to do that to the van. And mm. I was like, so d- the car accident itself, you know, that surprised me, but it was still very gruesome. Yeah, and then Katie just runs in, picks her up, doesn't care about the blood. She hits her head. She's bleeding from her head, which I'm praying that all the blood that went on her body is from that. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Do you think she... Jinx, she you me soda. <laughs> Mary had a lot of blood on that seat when Katie got there, and so I think in the way Katie was holding her, like this and up high, that's a mixture of both of their blood. Yeah. But it's not near the open... Okay. wound on her head. And, Wait, but so, and it touches also, your skin, though. I thought that you're infected. True, no. but keep in mind that the Kendra said uh, if the person is dead, the virus is also dead. So I think it's a matter of how f- did the virus die in that time between the accident and when Katie picks her up? In that two seconds? Yes, that's why I was like... Or was she still alive when Katie first picked her up? Because Katie was, you know turning around like I need help I need help and then did she die later on true we don't mm. even know we don't know so Katie might be infected she's quarantined no. and Jake was crying I mean, I mean she takes just, a shower by herself cry. this time yeah she's by herself it's a pretty lonely shower <laughs> this time just, around I wasn't here to say this but when I was watching this last the week before episode I wanted them to just move the shower curtain <laughs> they're not infected I talked about all the germs and how disgusting a public yeah. shower curtain yeah. is to be doing that through the hospital yeah i just that's what i was more concerned that's gotta about. be on a list of like weirdest scenes ever in 2016 <laughs> weirdest, <sex scenes. laughs> weirdest scenes on network television in 2016 containment shower containment. yeah shower scene but jake crying <laughs> was so oh, sad broke my heart because this is a guy who just didn't not that he didn't care about women he just couldn't he didn't have those feelings towards anyone. He mm-hmm. finally finds someone who he's happy with, who makes him happy, makes him a better person. And she's so wonderful. And she's so great. And he's mm-hmm. so excited to for a future with her. And now he's so scared at the possibility of losing her that, man, it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah, but it's, but it's sad. So but sad. But it's beautiful character development and acting and just all the things storyline-wise. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, I really hope she doesn't die, but speaking of that, let's jump into some predictions and talk about next week. Speaking of death. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of hoping she doesn't die. (laughs) I guess that didn't really go too well like I thought it was going to, but that's okay. I have two predictions. Okay, go. go. Prediction number one. This whole thing ends because we just have to nuke the (gasps) Corden. It's crazy, I know, it's probably not going to happen, but that's where my headspace is tonight. Jake and Katie could be together. Again. Yes, they can be holding each other <laughs> and Quentin as they all die. Oh, um, no. <laughs> but scenario number two is <laughs> Teresa's baby is the key to the <gasps> cure for this. Because Fun. a baby who's been born into this, like, pu- this is the purest thing that they have at this point. Yeah. Everyone else has been in some way... Like, not, I don't know, some way infected or something right. like that. And this is the purest form of life coming out. So I feel like the baby could be a key factor. All right. That would be cool. But this also could be very super, <laughs> like, it could be a very once upon a time the, type that of felt like a very world va- in my vampire head. diaries yeah. type of solution. That's all right. That's all right. Julie Pleck, she's yeah. on Vampire Diaries. Just thinking of a child's innocence and that could be the key to saving the chaotic world that the adults have made. That would be fun. Mm. We need that baby, and it's coming next it's week. It's coming so. anyway, yes. so might as well put it to use. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Um, I don't have anything as extreme. I think that the we're going to find out that uh, the phone call was actually to Sabine's husband and not Sabine. Mm-hmm. And I actually think it's about time Lex just got in the cordon and finally teamed up with Jake. He needs some help, and I think, you know, the brothers in blue, the... Best friends got to stick together, and they need each other right now. And Lommers did say, go get your girl. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you might be on to something with that. Um, I immediately was thinking, oh, my gosh, it's Lommers' husband. It just it has to be because I just saw this humanity in Lommers this episode, and I kind of wanted to be her husband instead of her. Um, you never know. So I started jotting down these things. 
Lammers and Burns could ha- be having an affair, oh, or it's Lammers' husband, or if it's Lammers, <laughs> is she doing this for her career? She's has she been doing this a lot, creating these viruses just to stop the viruses to become who she is, is she now? Creating, making herself. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Like creating she's situations. creating situations where uh, she's needed, so yeah. she has a job at all times. I mean, I don't know. She be- that's not be- a bad idea. Hero. I mean, <laughs> or or does the CDC do this in general? Boom. That was her mic drop. You just dropped the mic She dropped her pin in case you're listening on (laughs) iTunes, and that was the mic drop right there from Katie Campbell. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that could be happening. Conspiracies all over the place. The government is not real. I'm just hoping Sabine stays evil for at least one more episode, personally. I think you want her to be evil till the end. You know what? I think the fans are going to find out exactly why pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited for next week to see what's going to happen, get some answers. Um, and where can everybody find you to keep in touch until next week? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Tiana Hobson. Hey, guys. It's great seeing you guys through the camera. You can find me on Twitter at Double G on TV. And you can find me on Twitter at Katie E. E. Campbell. That's Katie with three E's Campbell. Instagram at Katie Campbell13 and YouTube.com slash Katie Campbell online. And tweet us your thoughts about tonight's episode. And until next week, you guys, bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.